always keep your foes confused. If they're never certain who you are or what you want, they cannot know what you're like to do next. Sometimes the best way to baffle them is to make moves that have no purpose or even seem to work against you. Remember that, Andreas, when you come to play the game. What game? The only game. The Game of Thrones. A Game of Thrones, the living card game, is a card game for two to four or six players of both tactical and long-term strategy. Players must employ all of their IQ to win, utilizing three different types of challenges. Military strength, intrigue, and political power. By beating opponents at these, players gain power tokens, and a first to 15 is the victor. Much like in life, the monster often wins. Like all things Song of Ice and Fire, you win or you die. Gameplay is cutthroat, and your friends and foes will change very, very often. Shifting alliances are a key factor in the game. In fact, they're forced upon players through a system of advantageous titles, such as Crown Regent or Master of Laws, which offer preset allies and enemies and must be picked each turn, except in two-player games. To ascend to the Iron Throne, you have to be a slime ball, a weasel, a backstabber, and a manipulator. You will lose all of your friends. The person who wins the Game of Thrones must be a dick devoid of all honor, dignity, and truthfulness. But you will feel damn good. As I have seen it, no man grows rich through kindness. The player in the lead could change in a heartbeat, and players are always in a tooth and nail struggle to find ways to earn the most power per turn while minimizing their own losses. Give me honorable enemies rather than ambitious ones, and I'll sleep more easily by night. Each player picks a distinctive house from the Song of Ice and Fire universe. Stark, Lannister, Targaryen, Baratheon, and, through expansions, Greyjoy and Martell. Each house has a uniquely tailored playstyle. For instance, Baratheon usually focuses mainly on power challenges, while Martell excels in counterattacks that take place after losing a challenge. However, strategies can be altered in any way, shape, or form by building custom decks. Hey buddy, I got some new expansions! And how do you feel about that? Uh, pretty good I guess. Did you pay the iron price for it, or the gold? That's... I asked a question. Did you pull it from the neck of a corpse you made, or did you buy it to match your fine clothes? What the hell are you talking about? Iron or gold? Gamers who are familiar with Magic the Gathering, or other competitive card games, should pick up a Game of Thrones easily. However, it is a difficult game to master. Less experienced players will have a hard time keeping up with all the action, as almost every card on the board has a different effect on the game. Some are constant, but many take effect only in response to other situations or cards. And these need to be closely monitored, or you'll miss many opportunities to use said cards and take the lead. Not to mention the various layers of alliances and the strategic ramifications of who and when to attack rather than defend. Okay, Andy, I want to attack you two power. You can't, you're my ally. Alright, um... Uh, Eric, six military. Uh, you cannot do a military until you win a power challenge. I guess we're Also, Calvary goes dead. It may be missing the constant, somewhat gratuitous sex scenes of the show, or the lobster gauntlets of the books, but the Game of Thrones card game is a very accurate depiction of George R. R. Martin's universe. Combat is brutal, life is cruel for the underprivileged, 
Your best friends are willing to stab you in the back at any moment. And sadness abounds as all hope for victory is taken away in a moment. And that's when my drinking problem started. But at least it has Hodor. Hodor. Have fun!